What is big? At UCF, being big provides options. Big creates opportunity, and Big offers more than 80 accredited online programs and certificates that fit your life no matter where you live. Ranked as one of the nation's top 20 online programs by U.S. News & World Report, UCF Online is more than just convenient, it's life-changing. To apply or search for degrees, visit ucf.edu slash online. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I'm Kelvin Thompson. And I'm Tom Cavanaugh. And you're listening to TopCast, the teaching online podcast. Hey, Tom. Hey, Kelvin. What is up? Uh, clouds. Sky. Yeah. yeah, but man, the weather is certainly better than uh, it was here in Florida a week or so ago, right? I guess. We are down to 89 degrees, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it's chilly. It's chilly. It's break out the, the parka weather. Uh, <laughs> I happened to be in South Florida this past weekend, and uh, it was it was balmy. You know? Balmy. Um, but I, we, we, my wife and I were watching the news and saw that it got down to like uh, below 70 at night uh, here in Orlando. You might have to turn on the heater. It was, we were jealous. <laughs> like, why? The one weekend we go away is the one weekend where you can put on a non-tank top to <laughs> to walk around outside. That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. But hey, at least we don't have a hurricane. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And actually, speaking of which, we wanted to, we wanted to say something about the hurricane. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to? Yeah, please. Go ahead. Okay, I will. Um, we know that a lot of our, our friends here in Florida that we work with a lot through the Florida Virtual Campus and, and other partnerships were impacted by Hurricane Michael, which recently hit uh, the pandemic. And Georgia. And, and Georgia, that's true. Some folks I still heard uh, at insult was added to injury up uh, in, through in the, the Carolinas. Carolinas and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we know, uh, having been through this ourselves a couple mm. of times, um, mm-hmm. what that can do and how disruptive that can be. I mean, just last year, Hurricane Irma, uh, we were out of commission for seven business days yeah. uh, here on campus at UCF, and we didn't even get it as bad as our friends in the Keys or in Miami got right, it. Right. So, um, you know, our thoughts are with all of our friends uh, to the north of us, mm-hmm. um, but in a practical sense, um, We've been trying to promote this on social media a little bit and through other channels, mm-hmm. um, but it, for those of, of our friends who are on the uh, the Canvas LMS, uh, we at our team here has developed a tool, an integration called Due Date Changer mm-hmm. that came in real handy for us last year it, post Irma, and it, it allows you to basically reset all of the due dates in your course very simply. Yep. And... Um, it, we've open sourced it yep. and uh, are offering it to uh, to to anybody really, but it, in particular those people who've been impacted by the storm or, or other sort of uh, acts of God that um, that uh, they had no control over. Uh, if they want to use it, uh, it's out there on GitHub. We've promoted it through the Florida Virtual Campus. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, in Structure Canvas mm-hmm. has um, has been sending it out. We got great support from them, including even from their CEO, from mm-hmm. uh, Josh Coates, who chimed in and, and jumped on it when mm-hmm. we made the suggestion. So, um, for more information about that, maybe we'll put a link in the show yeah, notes. Absolutely, and um, and please feel free to use it, and, and we hope it helps. You could certainly um, just Google UCF due date changer, and it would come up. You can get it uh, really easy, and you know it is it is probably the single most uh, popular integration uh, with our faculty ever, you know, uh, right up there with uh, you do it, the accessibility checker. But a couple of couple of clicks, one page, knock them all out, course by course, uh, makes it things a lot easier than it would be otherwise. Yep. Yeah, so hope, hopefully you guys recover. Uh, okay, so uh, from hurricanes to coffee, Tom. Hurricanes to coffee. I smell the coffee. I see the thermos. Um, I'm sure... There and I hear it now. There, yes. it, there will be some magical connection between what we are yeah. drinking Something. and what we will discuss. Yeah. Well, um, Tom, I feel like I've said this a couple times um, recently, but this is, I think, a first for us. Uh, and this one, the reason it's a first is this is a flavored coffee. Right. And I'm not a big flavored coffee. Person. I don't know if you know that. I mean, there's a couple of times I'll. I'll You're a bit it. of a purist. I am. I I like I like my coffee today. It's like you know, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> from from various places and there's subtleties that come from that. I just enjoy that. But this is an organic 
uh, spiced vanilla coffee from Latitude 23.5 Coffee and Tea in Sarasota, Florida. This coffee came to us by way of you, Tom. Indeed it did. From a doctoral student who's also a top cast listener. Would you like to give her a plug? Sure. Uh, so thank you to Chiquita Lane, who I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, to discuss her doctoral research um, and um, and put some a question out uh, from her on the WCET listserv mm-hmm. to try to kind of um, explore uh, some additional sources for her lit review mm-hmm. and inform her research, which is really interesting stuff. I enjoyed my conversation with Chiquita. Uh, she is a top cast listener. And um, and thank you so much for the coffee. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it may take a while for us to get to it, but here we are drinking it. That's right. Uh, and and uh, I'm enjoying it because I do like a flavored coffee. I have um, I have some hazelnut at home that I drink, yeah. um, but I mix it up between the non-flavored uh-huh. and the flavored. All right, sure, yeah. Well, I chose this coffee for today's episode because sometimes, whether you like it or not, sometimes things get a little spicy in our work, and <laughs> that's going to come up in today's conversation. You so you like the coffee? I you do get, like the you, coffee. You get the connection. I get the connection. Mm. So what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Um, here, here's here's some more foreshadowing. Uh, one of our uh, co-workers, I think it was Patsy Moskal, got a got a note. I won't I won't name him. I think I remember who it was, but she said I got this email from this colleague that we know and love. What's happening down there at UCF? <laughs> What's happening down there? Yeah. So we've been in the the, the news. A technology mediated course implementation within a UCF college has encountered some uh, what we might call student resistance. Mm-hmm. And this resistance has made its way into various news outlets. Indeed it has. Yeah, um, so those of you who may have been reading Inside Higher Ed uh, the last few weeks probably saw in the, actually it wasn't even just the digital learning coverage. The first article was kind of <laughs> above the fold. How about that? Front page, yeah. Good times, good times. Uh, <laughs> about our um, College of Business redesign and um, frankly, some of the blowback coming from students based upon this redesign. So uh, we've been getting questions. Um, I did a follow-up interview with Mark Lieberman, uh, the reporter from Inside Higher Mm -hmm. Ed, um, and I appreciated the opportunity to kind of dig in um, and address some of the follow-up questions he was getting. And um, I've been invited by Inside Higher Ed to write um, an op-ed, a column about this. which I will probably do. Mm-hmm. So maybe by the time this comes out, it will have been published. Well, if, if so, it'll, we'll put it in the show notes whenever it comes out, right. regardless. Um, if you don't see it, it probably means that Inside Higher Ed said, uh, not good enough. It doesn't oh, meet our standards, well, Kavanaugh. Hope, hope not. Hope, <laughs> hope not. But we, we thought we might take a moment to, in this, in, in, this, in this few minutes with you, dear listener, to pause and reflect on what we've learned at UCF through this experience. Yeah, and and maybe provide a little more context uh, than is possible through Reddit forums and um, and even inside higher ed articles, uh, where um, as 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 I think as fair as as Mark Lieberman uh, mm-hmm. was, um, and I'm not faulting him. It's just <laughs> there's a lot more to the story, well, and yeah, there's sure. more that I would I would like to say potentially and. Uh, I imagine that um, some of the people who listen to TopCast probably also read the, the mm-hmm, Inside mm-hmm. Digital Learning stuff yep. from Inside Higher Ed. And, I would, I would um, hope so. If not, you should. Might be interested. Yeah, I certainly subscribe and, mm-hmm. um, and appreciate uh, the emphasis that uh, that publication puts on the work that we do. But along with the context, right? I mean, there, I think our listeners, this is, this is a case study. This is a case study, mm-hmm. maybe uh, you've said this, and I appreciated the thought. This is, this is kind of a change management exercise, and so getting into the particulars about it, there are some lessons that we're learning, and there's some, some lessons that our, our listeners might uh, take away from our experience. So maybe it would be helpful just to kind of... Uh, Break it down? Yeah. yeah. All right, so... Um, I guess I will do that. Yeah, tell tell us tell us yeah. how we got here, Tom. Sure, and um, thank you for talking to uh, Mark Lieberman the first time because yeah, I was sure. I was in Europe. Yep. <laughs> that, yep, that was fun reading that article. Um, how about that? Yeah, while I was overseas. Um, so going back in time a little bit um, <laughs> the, <laughs> in the wayback machine, there the um, the College of Business here at UCF has long um, used a. Uh, lecture capture format to teach um, fairly large uh, sections of uh, their core courses. 
And um, it was a model kind of pioneered by a previous dean and inherited by our current dean. And um, to be honest, it's really, I mean, they're the college of business, right? It, mm -hmm. It's an efficiency model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, these are outliers uh, for how uh, online learning is done at UCF. This is the exception. Um, but there are cases where some of these courses were extremely large, mm -hmm. like 1,500 students large. That's, that's large. Yeah. And th while there was a class meeting time in a lecture hall, um, the vast majority of students, 90%, maybe more, would watch them on demand um, from home mm -hmm. <coughs> through streaming video. And in many cases, based on our, um, our information, uh, <laughs> would binge them uh, before midterms and finals at uh, a faster speed than regular, you know, 1x speed. Right. So I don't disagree with our college dean that that's not really the optimal educational experience that we wanted for our students. So some of that was the genesis behind talking about what could we do better. Mm -hmm. What kind of experience does he want for his students in the College of Business here at UCF? And he's really big on, um, on having students engage, mm -hmm. take ownership of their learning. Um, uh, he's kind of recast the advising model to be kind of career coaches. He right. wants it very practical so that they can be um, effective and um, employable <laughs> when they enter the workforce. Mm -hmm. So all of that we agree with. And so we, we had, a, over a period of time, a series of meetings and talked and brainstormed and shared our blended learning data with him. And um, we've had a lot of success here at UCF using blended learning. Um, and we can, we've talked about that in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, we could also uh, share some of the data again. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we were experimenting with adaptive learning and seeing really good results. And um, there's a new push here at UCF to, um, to emphasize active learning in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So between blended, adaptive, and active, um, those three things, and I think we've even talked about that redesign mm -hmm. in, a, in a previous episode. Yep. Um, so I won't, I won't belabor that. Um, but it was, in a, it was a research-informed discussion. It wasn't an arbitrary, let's just get rid of lecture capture thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, if we're going to get le rid of lecture capture, what can we do better mm -hmm. based on the research and our experience? So we, we did uh, a pilot with um, three courses in the College of Business. Two were core courses, and one was sort of an elective, a creativity one. Um, and uh, they went fairly well. Uh, they, they it was like a 1,200-seat section that got that got um, turned into a, a blended format um, where the students would meet in person five times a semester and do the balance of their work online um, either through um, pure adaptive or sort of a quasi-adaptive kind of homework tool and uh, content delivery through the LMS. And um, as I said, uh, uh, the, the grades were essentially unchanged. Mm -hmm. So we did no harm by making by making a change, which, frankly, we sort of expected a little dip. Anytime you do a big change mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and you're not maybe expert at it yet, um, that's it's not an unreasonable expectation. So having it be essentially equivalent outcomes, at least grades, um, we saw as not a bad foundation. And then the survey data was pretty good too. Most students, over 65%, I want to say, something like that, um, found uh, graded it positive or very positive. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there were some neutrals in there as well. What was interesting though was that there was a very small minority of students who actually attended class every time that commented about that in the surveys. And I don't think we paid enough attention mm -hmm. to that a subset of students who basically were, you know, a little bothered because they actually came to class. It's a small number of students, but, or a small percentage of students, I should say, but a small percentage of students in a 1,200 person course, mm -hmm. it becomes an N of increasing number. <laughs> right. um, so we didn't, I think, pay enough attention to that little nugget of feedback that was that was embedded in the survey results. Just, just drill that in a little bit. So in the mm -hmm. former model, the video lecture capture model, where students could come to class or not come to class if they wanted, uh, there were students who were regularly coming to class. And then in this new thing where it was five class meeting times, very, very focused in active learning and so forth, they were coming to class then too, but for them, it was, hey, 
I'm not coming to class as much as I used to. You're taking something away from me. You're taking me. something was, away from was me. Was their narrative. As opposed to all the data would suggest that gr huge, great majority of the students enrolled these courses formerly in the video lecture capture model weren't coming to class. And by the way, not watching the videos either. Right. It's in fact, those who did watch them binged them at double speed. But that, but we also know from analytics that not everybody was watching the videos. Right. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm just making up a number here. But out of a class of say a thousand, mm -hmm. maybe fifty mm -hmm. would show up on the regular. Yeah. Um, and so that's a very small percentage. That's correct. But you you multiply that now when we take this pilot to scale across ten or fourteen courses that 50 in every one of those courses adds up. Yep. And then you've get, you get a, a, a kind of a critical mass of people that are saying, you took something away from me and um, I, I'm not able to come to class as much now. And you've changed the model. Now I have to quote unquote teach myself instead mm -hmm. of you lecturing to me and telling me what's gonna be on the test. Um, it, it is, um, it was a paradigm shift uh, to invoke sort of a cliche. And I think the biggest lesson learned, kind of circle back to how you, you contextualize this, is um, we probably did a poor job of change management. Mm -hmm. I think if I could go back in time, um, I would have worked with the College of Business to um, better explain to students why we were making the change, <clears throat> pardon me, why um, we think this is better based on the research, what we hope to accomplish in it, mm -hmm. what is different about the kind of in-class experience they're going to have, because it's mm -hmm. based on active learning, applied group work, it's yep. not lecture-based, no. um, and how that will help them in the workforce uh, when, when all is said and done. And I don't think we did that well enough. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say it didn't happen, because I, I know that the College of Business included some of this mm -hmm. in their orientations, yeah. and they talked to students, but, you know... The dean is a blogger. He's been he's, blogging he's about this stuff about for it. That's true. a couple of years, really, before yep. this all started. Yeah, but it seems that maybe uh, it still caught some people by yeah, surprise. of course. And so you get some agitated, active students. Yep. Um, God bless them. Yep. They're, they're going to student. Yep. <laughs> um, who start a petition uh, yeah. to complain and, and advocate for a change. Uh, and, I, and it seems to be the, the group of students who were attending every class who kind of initiated this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I suspect that now we've got a group of students. So that's a group of students who are being told you can't come to class every yeah. week. You will come five times. Right. And that's how they're perceiving it. And then you've got a group of students who never came to class, mm -hmm. you know, thousands mm -hmm. <laughs> um, being told you have to come five times now what yeah I was I was quite happy with things the way they were and you can't sit at home and and binge uh, right before the <laughs> midterm anymore and we're not lecturing at you we're expecting you to come in and have done the pre-work yeah. um, so that you can be effective in your group um, and now they they're probably not thrilled with the change and we didn't yeah. probably prep them as well as we could have yeah. and so you have these two completely different ends of the spectrum both so dissatisfied both dissatisfied sort of joining forces um <laughs> to to create a petition and to kind of accost our president at open forums <laughs> and that's always fun that's always him. fun yeah um he's been great he's mm -hmm. he he understands why we're doing it and he's been really supportive uh going back to his time as as provost of course he wants it to work and he wants students happy yeah, yeah, um, and, and we're working on that yeah. um, but that's a little bit of the background and I think some of that that nuance has gotten lost in the reddit forums and in the the story that's being told um, you know some students are just the, the narrative seems to be you've taken this thing away from me UCF's yep. just trying to make money and uh, put as many students uh, as possible in these classes and I think a lot of these students who are part of this petition didn't realize their classes were 1,500 students big. Yeah, sure. Because they'd show up and there'd be 30 other students in the classroom with them. Yeah, right. I think two other little things just to add on to that. One is, um, and we've talked about this in previous episodes when we've talked about blended learning, our traditional um, classic blended model um, before that here at UCF, it is a reduced seat time model, right? That is 
uh, generally speaking, in our online teaching and learning world, our TopCast listeners will aver uh, some folks reduce seat time, some don't. That tends to be the big dividing line. We have historically reduced seat time. And in fact, before blended was a name or hybrid was a name, we had, we've talked about before, the designation mixed modality. And in the explanation, in every course schedule uh, sign up uh, thing, we've got this is a reduced seat time model. Yeah, right? and, and that's so, always been viewed as a positive. That's right. We're re- yes, exactly. It's an online thing. you got the face-to-face. But that same terminology was applied here with um, these business courses that you're talking about in this new active learning uh, five uh, class session thing. So there's a reduction in seat time in the blended context yes. from um, a meet every week for 16 weeks uh, kind of a sense. That didn't help with the student narrative. I reduced seat time. You've reduced my seat time. Yeah. Again, ignoring the fact that you didn't have to come before, many didn't come before, and now you're actually having to come. So you could you could say this is a required seat time model. Right, just change the R, right? <laughs> yes. it's, a, it's an interesting um, kind of case study in branding as well. Yes, it and is. We've had that discussion, and obviously, within the college business, uh, who would be sort of experts in that. That's right. Um, and we've talked about it. It's probably too late to change it now because it's it's a thing uh, out there. That That's that's right. And, 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 and it is technically, I would say, a blended kind of a model. Oh, it is. But it's not our mainstream blended model at no. UCF. And it's not the kind of Carol Twig, NCAT, right. you know, blended um, model. But it's a it's a model of um, of reality, I would say. Yes. Um, so I don't know if I Practical. mentioned this. I, I know we talked about it in the previous uh, podcast that when we discussed this. Um, but, you, t- you know, you take a 1,200-seat section and you want everybody to meet in person the maximum number of times you can. Mm-hmm. You look at just the number of class meetings you have and faculty that you have to teach it, and you divide that up. That's five times a semester mm-hmm. times 200 people, which is about mm-hmm. the max we can fit in a room and still have active learning. Mm-hmm. It was sort of practical. Yep. Um, so that uh, that's how we kind of backed into that 200 uh, people uh uh, times five times a semester number to be to be frank. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it is interesting. I don't know. If, I don't think I told you this. I don't know if you've seen this for yourself. If you were to do a web search right now for blended and UCF, you get a lot of things, right? You get the blended learning toolkit we've talked about before, the blend kit course materials, uh, some research, some various things. But uh, recently, uh, on the first page of the Google search, uh, news articles about this. Uh, mm-hmm. surface. Yeah. So for some folks, that's why you get like our colleague who got, what in the world's going on down there with blended learning? Yeah. Did you guys go off the rails? What happened? Yeah. Well, it's a different kind of blended learning in a, in a sense. It's a different model. It is. And um, yeah, and to be clear, um, I still believe in it. Yes. Um, and the, the dean and I are, um, I think we're, we're of a single mind here that uh, we're going to stay the course. We're going to fix uh, some of the things that we can fix. Um, you know, obviously, we're always interested in student feedback. And when students aren't happy, um, we take that seriously and we listen to them. Um, but um, we believe that this pedagogical model, uh, once, um, once it's implemented uh, the way we kind of all want it to be implemented, and I think, I think we're on the way. Yeah. Um, is going to be far superior to uh, watching 75-minute lectures one after another in a binge session at double speed, um, you know, just being lectured at. Yeah, you didn't call, I mean, just to put a fine point on it, right? I mean, our listeners understand this. Bloom's taxonomy, right? What we're talking about is moving up uh, the triangle. Yes. We're, we're talking about um, application at a very, a very minimum and... Um, uh, evaluation, synthesis, those kinds of things happening in these class meetings. And you know what? Sometimes students don't like it when you ask them to do more of that. But you know what? There's plenty of literature that suggests that's what employers want yes. is students who can do those things, who can apply yep. and synthesize yep. and evaluate. And, and we know active learning is superior. That's um, right. We, you know, we brought in uh, speakers as we were planning some of this yep. um, in collaboration uh, or at least um, partnered with yep. um, our, our faculty center. Yep. And we've spoken to people like Scott Freeman yep. in Washington yep. who, who are the 
the people for the this. active learning people yeah, yeah. Um, so again this this was not arbitrary this is not financially driven right. it, this in fact is costing more than lecture capture to do yeah. this right <laughs> um, because of uh, the increased number of teaching assistants that we're putting in the classroom to to work with them um, to work with all of these groups because it's a lot easier to have a single faculty member stand in front of the room and lecture uh, and that's cheap but that's not what this is about um, and you know it's sort of it pains me to think that, that hmm. some students and parents think, think that, that that's right. what this is sure. about. You know. Well, as uh, we're drawing a little bit uh, uh, closer to our, to our end time, might we, for the benefit of our, our TopCast listening audience, see if we can synthesize ourselves a little bit here, some of the lessons learned from this case study in change management. What, what are we walking away with, and what would we uh, share with our colleagues uh, listening through the headphones. Yeah, there's a couple of observations that uh, I think you and I have talked about and you uh, mm -hmm. so generously jotted down here um, in kind of our preparation notes. Mm -hmm. um, you want to take them in turns? Uh, sure. So maybe I'll do the first one. Sure. Which is that <laughs> intentional and beforehand proactive mm -hmm. is uh, is almost always better than ad hoc and after the fact. Yeah. I might even take the almost. Yeah out of there. We like to be understated yeah, around here. <laughs> it is always better. So yeah, if, if I could, um, I would, I would have paid more attention to the, um, to the comments mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. um, not being able to come to class every time, even though it was just a small number in our pilot. Probably, Foreshadowing was there. Yeah. And you know, it's <laughs> funny too. Um, the, the person who helped us with some of the, that data collection was, uh, was Dr. Patsy Moskal, mm -hmm. who's kind of leading some of our analytics and evaluation efforts here. Mm -hmm. um, she brought it up to me mm -hmm. and she said, this was an interesting thing. You know, mm -hmm. Look at this. And I'm like, yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, it was only a few students. Uh -huh. um, and um, I should have listened to Patsy more, which is that's probably right. general life you know, advice. That, that, that's, that's, that's true. That's true. Um, here's another one. Communicating with students the nature of their course modality and their expected role or roles within that modality is essential. Uh, that's communication from the institution and from individual instructors. We've talked about that kind of idea before, right, because we're all about good design here on TopCast. And, uh, but in this kind of a change management sense as well, like whether you're rolling out a, a classic blended model or, uh, or an online model or anything else, that's still true. Yeah. That's still true. Communicate. You can't over communicate. When you think that you've communicated everything thoroughly, do it a bit more. Yeah. You're just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Number three, um, an inconsistent message, like what our value proposition is, mm -hmm. uh, allows the message to be co-opted and mutated by others. You know, kind of what what you were talking about, mm -hmm. the reduced seat time becomes, you've taken something away from me. Yeah. And um, we've talked about this with the College of Business leadership that we, we kind of feel like the we've lost control of the narrative yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a PR spin way, but um, there are some genuine reasons that, that we did this that we think are beneficial, yeah. that we probably could have been way better at controlling that message to students than, than just kind of putting it out there and mm -hmm. making some assumptions and, um, and then not anticipating um, you know, the variety of reactions that might come from that. Yes, and related to that, I would say if you are unclear about what you are doing and why you are doing it, it's likely that messaging to students uh, will be unclear as well. So if you're not clear, how are you going to make it? How are you going to make a message really clear for your students? And I think that because of the, despite the the build up to this and all, we still moved at a rather rapid pace, uh, given the numbers involved. Oh yeah. And uh, when when that's the case, we you and I both know this that okay, here's the general direction, but not everybody around the table uh, is, is singing the same tune, right? Not everybody is saying, oh, is this a blended course? Oh, is this an online course? What is this? Yeah. Is, is this, this a, adaptive? Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it just a new wave of video lecture capture? There's a variety of folks, a variety of perspectives, as many as there were people around the table. Uh, and if you don't have that unified, it doesn't matter how many videos you make or how many blog postings you have or, <laughs> or whatever, right? Um, the message 
is not going to be unified and, it, and students aren't going to get it either. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so, um, you know, maybe the, the last thing I'll say before we kind of wrap it up is that um, <laughs> it, it, we debated whether or not we should talk about this uh, on TopCast um, or should we just let it fade um, mm. because, it, as you said, it's spicy. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and there is a certain amount of anxiety and controversy about it. I get asked about it. I was presenting at a conference last week and mm -hmm. I was in the middle of my presentation and mid-sentence somebody's hand went up and like, well, what's going on with your blended? Aren't, isn't you having some problems? I'm like, okay, Dang. all right. So, all right, let's talk about it. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, Good I'll, for you. Uh, we'll just we'll pause everything I was saying and we'll talk about <laughs> that. Um, so we did, um, and and I thought, you know what? It, it's probably always better to be transparent if yep. there's if there's something that um, others could benefit from from this experience. Then yeah, let's put it out there. Uh, we're not hiding anything. Um, uh, we we have uh, sincere, I think, uh, good intentions behind this, and um, and at the end of the day, I still believe this will this will be really good for our students. Yeah, that's great. Well, why don't I take a a um, stab at uh, wrapping this up for us, if that's okay. if that's all right, and you see if you agree with it or not. So we've talked about change management. Well, you know what? Change management is hard, uh, and to uh, to riff on a now maybe old management book, no mouse wants their cheese moved. Nope. Who moved my cheese? It's part of the business of online education and digital learning professionals though to move cheese. If we're going to innovate, we have to help foster change well and sometimes there are missteps. But hopefully we learn from those missteps so we can do better next time. Yeah, the, the, the business of digital learning innovation isn't just about digital learning innovation. That's right. It's, it's as much about communicating that change um, as anything else. And, I, and that may be the, the biggest bottom line from this whole, this whole experience that we're, we're in the midst of right now. Mm -hmm. well, cool. Well, until next time for TopCast, I'm Kelvin. And I'm Tom. See you.